Hello, friends. Welcome to Kardec Radio. I'm Alba Morales from Annapolis, Maryland, and we are here together in our daily prayer. Let us center ourselves. Let us take all these concerns and preoccupations out of our mind and to have this little moment of intimacy with God. Let us close our eyes and breathe. Let us feel like uh, we are immersed in this warm, clear pool of water. And therefore, we feel relaxed feel calm and serene. Let us all together in one mind, in one heart, let us say, Dear Father, Mother God, how grateful we are for one more day of life. How grateful we are for these brief moments with you with our brothers and sisters in both realms. How grateful we are for this moment of nurturing our soul. May your love guide this afternoon our minds, inspire our hearts, comfort our souls, and may the light this sweet little prayer illuminates and radiates its light to all of us around us. In your name we pray, and so be it. So hello again to Kardec Radio, to our daily prayer. We just were doing an initial prayer in order for us to, to settle down and to connect with God. And also we're going to do a reading. This also help us to focus and concentrate in something different than our day-to-day -day lives, uh, the social media news, etc., etc. That's the reason why we read a message here in our prayer to center our minds. So therefore the good mentors, they can help us better. And we are learning to for today, we have this uh, little book from Joanna de Angelis entitled, entitled Living and Loving. Again, by Joanna de Angelis, by the medium Divaldo Franco. And we choose chapter two, which is entitled Permanent Tolerance. Who doesn't need tolerance, especially nowadays, especially families in quarantine or couples, or people that are sharing the same house or home together, even more, all of us. We need tolerance from others, and we need to be tolerant of others. So let us see what Joanna de Angelis is going to tell us about it, okay? She starts saying, Tolerance is a gradually weakening virtue nowadays. Although tolerance is of the utmost importance for the self and his or her relationship to humankind in general, the existing state of pragmatic ideas has been discrediting it and casting it aside. Seems like it's not important for society nowadays. In a home without tolerance, family members are always quarreling when tolerance is not present, where business transactions are carried out, people do not trust each other, and if it's absent from the social circles, it is replaced by moral discomfort and destructive competition. So we create a very harsh environment when we don't practice tolerance. 
Sometimes people substitute acrimony, johnniness, offense, or hypocrisy for tolerance, mistaking those attitudes for forbearance. Would you believe that? We're still in a planet of evolution because we believe that a virtue is actually the opposite of if acrimony. Wow, and we're thinking, oh, the person is very tolerant. No, my friends. To be tolerant to the faults of others is to acknowledge our own weakness, drawn back to us through the mistakes of others. And this is beautiful. What Joanna de Angelis is saying is when we don't tolerate someone's someone's errors or attitudes or words, somehow we are reflecting ourselves in that very own act, like a mirror. So we don't tolerate it, we don't like it, because deep inside, we may act the same, say the same, do the same. It's like a mirror. So when we recognize our mistakes, our weaknesses, Therefore, we are able to tolerate and to understand better others, family members, friends, and co-workers. She says, we must understand that everybody needs a chance for self-renewal. Everybody. Even that co-worker that I don't like, yes. Even that person that is bothering me every day, all day, yes. Every, if, even so and so that I don't think has a hope to change. Um, yes, all of us, we need a change, chance for self-renewal. Tolerance also dispenses with the harsh criticism that poses a friendly help. Tolerance is a feeling of brotherhood. Even when it is not easily noticed, it is there, laden with everybody, everywhere, awaiting a favorable opportunity to express itself. So here Joanna de Angelis is giving us good news. Because we, we were thinking, okay, I understand I need to, to develop or to enhance my tolerance, but oh God, that is difficult. So Joanna, what is you propose, well, how can I do that? So she said, all of us, we have tolerance in a latent state, meaning we have the seed of tolerance inside of us. What do we do with the seed? We nurture the seed, we water the seed, we take care of the seed. In other words, we practice. We start practicing with ourselves, yes, because we are very harsh and we have this tendency to criticize everything in our own selves. So we need to be tolerant to ourselves. Sometimes we believe or we put the bar too high for us and it's something that probably we won't do for others, but only with ourselves. So first of all, let us be tolerant with ourselves. Today I didn't feel the energy to accomplish everything in my to-do list, let us be tolerant. Today, I forgot to do this or to say this, let us be tolerant. Today, in an impulse, I wasn't thinking and I hurt someone with my words, let us be tolerant, we can fix it, we can. So let us be tolerant to ourselves. Let us recognize that we are not perfect, that we fail, and therefore we can see others with compassion and see others, even if they appear to be a perfect being. If they are on planet air, they are not, and they are prone to mistakes too. Joanna de Angelis continues saying, tolerance is calm and natural, fraternal and gentle. It springs from one's heart like limpid water 
that quenches one's thirst. It is generous. It forgets offense easily and tries to help defender. Tolerance is an act of love and charity. We're going to read that again. Tolerance is an act of love and charity. How can I be charitable with the people around me? Being tolerant. I don't have financial resources to share with others. I can be tolerant with them. Oh, I don't have the skills to do something for others. Let us be tolerant. Let us put gentleness and kindness and fraternity in the world. That is tolerance. A person's moral development is measured by the degree of tolerance he or she is able to grant to the errors and limitations of others. So the stature, the height of our spirit is measured in the degree in which we are tolerant to others. Say the mother or the father of a toddler. The other day, a good friend of us was sharing that his toddler uh, took his car keys and hide it in some place that they couldn't find it up to today. No way they search for all around the house and the car keys are not somewhere. So understanding that this is a toddler, right? That didn't do it with a bad intention, a mischievous intention, this father comprehend, understand the situation of the toddler and therefore is tolerant to the situation even though it's difficult, they need a second copy of the car keys. That's what God does with us. We make mistakes, we are coming in several reincarnations trying to learn and again he can see us in this process of learning and evolution with tolerance. And that's basically what Joanna is telling us here to develop this heart and mind of a mother, of a father that can understand that the other, my neighbor, can make mistakes. To finalize, there is not a single person in the world who never makes mistakes. This is the reason why we need to be tolerant to one another. Tolerance pacifies the defender and helps him or her to grow spiritually while opening up areas of sympathy for the tolerant person. Tolerance is a child of superior feelings and reveals the wisdom of reason. When Jesus was betrayed by the gross ignorance of populace, the cunning of the Pharisees, Pilatus' weakness, and the cowardly behavior of friends, he was tolerant to them, although he never had himself, needed anyone's tolerance. Jesus taught boundless love. His life was a hymn to tolerance and an opportunity of redemption to those who had fallen by the wise side. Be yourself tolerant to the faults of others because you also need tolerance, both from others and from the laws of life. We need tolerance from others and we need tolerance from God. So we have a lot of food for the spirit. We have a lot of ideas to meditate on, to think about it. And also like a new goal, especially in quarantine with the difficulty of not being able to go out and sharing 724 with the very same people, it is normal that situations can feel that they are out of our hands. But we always have this moment of centeredness, which is prayer. We can do it together, like here, right now. We can do it by ourselves. 
And when we feel at the edge of our emotion that something is going to explode in our heart, we need to breathe. Calm. Like Joanna de Angeli says, be calm in every situation. And when I call myself, I can analyze the situation and exercise tolerance. This is the invitation for tonight, my friends. Let us hold hands virtually. Let us unite our hearts because this is a task of every one of us, growing spiritually. All of us, we have struggles. All of us, we have our difficulties. All of us, we have our pain and our concerns. All of us. Some of you may be develop a lot of tolerance and some beautiful virtues. Some of us, we are still trying to exercise the virtues of love and charity and tolerance. So the invitation, let us center and feel how God is being tolerant with us, okay? Let us close our eyes. Let us feel that we are holding hands. We are brothers and sisters, children of the same father, of the same mother God. We are brothers and sisters of our dear and benevolent Jesus. And we invite him to come to these moments of prayer, all together in one mind, in one heart, we say, Dear Governor of planet Earth, we reach out to you, first of all, to express our gratitude because we are alive and we are well, to express our gratitude for a beautiful day. Even with its difficulties, we were able to overcome it. And if we didn't yet, we know that everything is temporary and this also shall pass. We are grateful because we can count with technology and connect to one another through the heart. And we know that you are here with us, comforting our souls inspiring us to be a better person. Dear Master Jesus, we are here also to pray for others, to ask for your benevolence and for your mercy so they receive the healing that they need in their physical bodies, especially all of our brothers and sisters undergoing the illness caused by the COVID-19 virus. We pray for all of those who are isolated in hospitals, battling this deadly virus without the support, the emotional support of the family members, may the good mentors, May the good spirits surround them and give them the strength to pass these deaths. We pray for all the first line workers, for the anonymous heroes and heroines that are working in hospitals, that are working in education, that are working in different fronts of the society, we don't know their names, but they have families, they have loved ones, and they're exposing themselves day in and day out, working diligently to benefit others in need. 
May them be protected and guided. Give them the strength to continue their work. Give them the resources, moral resources and physical resources so they can accomplish their tasks. We pray for all of those who are currently undergoing illnesses of the mind, that they feel their emotions are out of balance and they don't know how to go back to the state of balance. We pray for them that even though outside is sunny, for them is a dark and rainy day, comfort their hearts and give them the light to understand that it is inside of themselves that they can find their very own cure. Give them the hope and the solace and the relief fighting encouraging words through a message in social media to a phone call from a friend to the encouraging words of a family member. May all of them be brave and walk towards their own healing. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our very own needs. We don't need to express it with words. You know our heart. You know our thoughts. And we lift them up to you so you can take care of our needs, of our concerns, of our preoccupations, of our very own illnesses. And we lift them up to you because we are full of hope. We know this is a temporary situation. We know this is a moment of transition. And even though it's difficult, we know also that we are being blessed by our dear Father for giving us the chance to live in these times. We are witnessing the transformation of the planet and we want to be part of the transformation. We are grateful and we praise you. And we sing a song of joy in the midst of the darkness, because we know later when you call us to the spirit realm, we will be singing all together, triumphant as a brothers and sisters, overcoming the current difficulties. May your light bless our homes, our neighbors, our community, our cities, our country, our world. May your kind heart embrace us all. In your name we pray, and so be it. Thank you, friends, for being here. We hope that you feel renewed and refreshed as we feel. We feel here in our heart, the connection. And although we don't know each other, we're very grateful for these moments with you. Until next Friday, thank you.